the lower bracket... No, lower bracket finals. Yeah, the lower bracket finals is going to be Google Frog versus Anir. So, that is going to be on Ravaged. Nice. That is... I, that is a map I very much enjoy seeing. I'm glad we're going to be able to... See, well, anyway, would be able to see it because it was guaranteed. Wanderlust was the only one up in the air depending on format. But we got to see that too. So I'm happy. So yeah, this is going to be... So the first one's best of one. This one's best of one. The next one is going to be best of three. So we're going to have three games for the grand finals. Starting on... What map are we starting on? Starting on Tandem Craters. Tandem Craters? Really? That is not a map you see very often. I think I've seen it once in... A, yeah, I saw it once in a 1v1 exhibition match. I don't entirely know why, but okay. At any rate, we... Like I said, we are on Ravaged. We have Google Frog versus Anir. Anir winning the match against Hokomoko. Apparently quite quickly as well. So, with that, we should have... Yeah, we should have this going in a moment. Now, Ravage is a map with a lot of cliffs. Ravage is a map where you see jump bots, occasionally spiders, oftentimes gunship. I mean, I don't expect we're going to see a gunship strat when both players are one match away from elimination. But we might. And also, for the people pointing out, that is actually not Google Frog's first loss. Google Frog lost during the tournament as well. Like they actually did lose a match during the Swiss. They were 6-1 at the end. Like, it was... It's close, but... They did... Who did they lose to? They lost to Dimefreund, actually. So they lost to Dimefreund both times they met. And theoretically, there's a third... They could meet a third time. Because, well, if Google Frog wins this, they fight Dimefreund. Whoever wins this fights Dimefreund. So it doesn't matter who. Just the winner of this... Faces Dying Freud in a best of three starting on Tandem Creators. And Google Frog, I mean, if they win, we give a, th a third rematch. Or second rematch, rather. A three match! Eh. Let's do it. Yeah. Darn it. My bracket system is not as good as it could be. Anyway, that aside, we have game. We have game. We have Ravaged. We have Google Frog and Anir, and we have no idea what is going to happen in terms of strategies, because this map tends to support rather weird things. Because of the cliffs, you get spiders, you get jump bots, you get gunships. And then you get Cloaky, because, you know, Cloaky is the safe option. So I kind of expect Cloaky. I seriously expect Cloaky. Cloaky is Cloaky's the way to go. But if we see spiders, that'd be awesome. If we saw gunships... That'd be surprising. Like I said, both players would... Like, that'd be a massively risky play. But it might work. It's best of one. Cheese strategies do pay off. If they work. But both players are very strong. I don't think either player is thinking they have to cheese in order to keep going. Anyway, Google Frog with the Clokebot Factory. And Anir is going to be... Playing? Yes. And they're going for Cloakie as well. They are going to be having a safe game. A reasonably long game. We are not going to be having a quick cheese strat. All or nothing win. I expect we might have that in the first match for best of three finals, but at the same time, that is a very large map, so I don't know what that cheese threat would be. I was mentioning gunships potentially on something like Otago, but then it occurs to me that that is way too long and you'd be set up against it. Like, you wouldn't know one way or the other until about a minute and a half in, but you'd probably know quickly enough and it takes a while for gunships to get across and to reinforce. So... Tricky. If your opponent guesses it, you're done. Map like this, the rush distance is way shorter, so on the one hand, it is easier to defend and make that work, and also there's a lot of room to maneuver around the back. On the other hand, you're going to be spotted pretty quick. Or at least the lack of units is going to be a dead giveaway really quick. That's more what it's about. Anyway, Google Frog managing to get a bit of scouting in, but not a whole lot of damage, while Anir has a much stronger force, much, much stronger force. Google Frog will be able to get out expand them, at least if they manage to keep the Conjurers alive. But at the same time, are they going to do that? Because Anir has pushed forward already. They're being extremely aggressive with their expansion. Not even waiting. They're going straight for the center. They figure Google Frog's not going to stop them. 
And I think they're right, too. Google Frog did not go for a strong military at the start. They went for a strong economy. They went for as many constructions as they could field early on. And I'm not sure it'll pay off. Because, again, are is Anir going to be able to get in and deal enough damage? I think the answer is yes. Like, there's no way I can see that Anir is going to be able to lose this. Like, Google Frog, if they can take it, it'd be, it'd be good. It'd be a very strong play, because that would leave Anir with only their main base and their natural. Well, the natural hasn't been expanded to very much. But at the same time, Anir has a force of about seven glaives that are reasonably well concentrated. And Google Frog's commander already going forward, and it's a economy commander as well. It does have the beam laser. It is essentially a lotus on its own, on top of a supported glaive. But Anir has enough glaives here, they could take out the commander. This early, a commander kill like that would be devastating. Actually, given that Google Frog's commander is totally open, oh, Anir doesn't know that. If they had radar up front, they would know. They would know that Google Frog's commander has no support. They could put all the glaives behind it, or they could have. The time has passed. But they could have put all the glaives around it. Half a dozen glaives against a commander like that, glaives would win. A close win, mind you, but they would win. It's just Beam Laser. Beam Laser on an Econ commander is not going to be a win for the Econ commander. Not against half a dozen or so glaives, but Anir instead playing for the... Well, okay, they're playing for the map control. They're playing for the area denial, or they were at least. And I don't agree with that, because three glaives is too many. One glaive is enough. Three glaives, you're kind of wasting glaives that early in the game. But now there's, yeah, ten glaives coming in here. I mean, against four glaives, it's actually st still fairly even. Google Frog is very likely to take this and survive. Yeah, that... Is not surprising considering that they had four glaives on top of a Lotus on top of the commander. The commander is six ish on its own. And then there's four glaives on top of the Lotus, which is another three or four glaives. Like, Anir needed an additional six glaives to have a hope of taking that. And then it would have been down to positioning because glaives can't shoot past each other. So that would have been even harder. Like, a proper surround with 12 to 16 glaives would have probably taken that. But even then, it would have likely required a lot of really quick micro. Like, get rid of the weak stuff first, get rid of the Lotus, get rid of the, all the Glaives, like, very rapidly get rid of all the Glaives, get rid of the Lotus, then get rid of the Commander with your remaining six to eight Glaives. But that didn't happen. At this point, though, Anir does have enough money to work with, and they do have enough money to be able to take on a lot of stuff here. While Google Frog is able to clean up some of the side forces, Anir might still be able to take out the Commander. Maybe. It's tricky, though, because the Ronin can't easily get in and deal the damage onto the Lotuses. Especially onto the full set of Lotuses. And that is where the problem lies. I mean, I think Google Frog clearly taken this suggestion from Dimefriend, from watching what Dimefriend did to them on Otago, using that to help deal with Anir and take out the center and just push in, stopping Anir from doing that aggressive expansion. But even with that, Anir did manage to get the aggressive expansion. It still managed to get a lot of forces right off the bat. Like, that's the thing. Their, their current metal is still very high. It's not quite there in terms of used. More so in produced, not so much in used, as some reclaim or some excess has happened. But it is still close. However, because of the attrition and because of that slight difference, Google Frog's army value is still way higher. And given that, and given the fact that these glaives here are pretty much perfectly poised to get rid of this entire entire Ronin sling army if they chose to go for it, but they didn't, so the Reavers will have a field day. Actually, the Ronin as well, and that's a bit surprised it's been taken. And Google Frog does still have a lot of room to work with. I mean, they got just got rid of another Conjurer over the south, the, north, the southeast side. So with that, I mean, really, what does Google Frog have that Anir can't just... Sorry, what does Anir have that Google Frog can't just take away? And the answer is not much, as Google Frog just took out Anir's commander with a bunch of hidden sights. The commander just jumped into that, too. Like, that has got to suck. An ambush jump. Oh, I mean, on top of what Anir already set up, and now Anir just has basically nothing to build with. They have a couple builders. They have no storage. They have way too little energy. And their opponent's commander is far too heavily defended to deal with. So, not really sure how that's going to work. But I don't see it working out too well for Anir. So with that, we're... Uh, looks like Anir is going to be... Okay, going for a sneaky strat. Going around the back. Trying to do what they can. I mean, 
The same can be said for Google Frog, and Google Frog is having loads of success with it, getting rid of all Veneer's economy. And this is gotta be painful. The sheer amount of damage that Veneer has taken over the solar plants. I mean, I don't think it's gonna be a major thing here. And what? Oh, well, at any rate. Chat going on about the format, but no, it's best of three. And really, the time constraint, I think, is more Aquanim than me. I actually have a fair amount of time, but Aquanim really wants to go to bed, so. I'm blaming them. <laughs> I mean, don't don't be mad at Aquanim. This is a bit of a long tournament. Like, it's, it's understandable. I got up early. So, it's just... I get that, and Google Frog is also in Australia, so they'd also be up fairly late. But yeah, at this one, Google Frog actually does look poised to win. So, they're going to be playing again against Dynafor in a best of three. And this is going to be tricky. I mean, so far they've lost twice. So they have to win two games against Dynafor, essentially evening up their total score against each other, in order to take it. And Dynafor, if they win two more, I mean, Dynafor wins. Or out. But Anir is still holding on. Like, Anir is... I don't see any easy way they have out of this. I mean, it's... Google Frog's massive economic advantage. Google Frog's massive forward positioning advantage. The fact that Google Frog has such a large army. I mean, unit value advantage by 5,000. Like, over twice as many units by metal. Over twice as much... In like, three times the income by metal. Actually, by both, just about. And... There's not a whole lot that Anir has that can deal with this. So they have the size, that's nice, but the size aren't getting any value. They're not hitting anything that matters. The stuff that matters is too well defended to be hit by sides. The slings aren't doing a terrible job, but it's too little too late. Like the only... I don't, know, I don't know what Anir could really do. The problem for Anir is they don't have the money. They don't have metal with which to do anything. They could do a fax switch if they had the metal. They could switch over to, I don't know, massive Reaver army, I guess. Or no, the Ronin would deal with that. I mean, they could try to fight Ronin versus Ronin. Maybe win that way. But they don't have the money to do that. They don't have the money to do anything. It's That's the problem. They lost their medal. Google Frog took away their expansions, took away their commander, and that's how you win this game. You stop your opponent from being able to build anything in the first place. After that, everything else is a formality. At any rate, though, Google Frog still does have this match pretty much in the bag. Anir is rebuilding, and I'm glad they are. But at the same time, that's still only going to leave them with, what, half of the economy of Google Frog? Actually, no, with some Reclaim. No, never mind. With Reclaim, they're actually managing to get back even. Problem, of course, being they don't have much production capacity, but hey, more builders. So they actually do have production capacity. So there you go. And with that, looks like... Wait, why is this here? I mean, okay, Nier can build stuff, but it's like, you know, build the caretakers or directly assist the factory. Either way. I mean, Anir has managed to get their economy back up. That's one thing. Like, they're, like their income's back on track. So I give them that. Unit value is still way behind. 70, 7k now. They have to kill loads of units. Like, this entire army of glaives, if it died, might be part of it. That's not 504, not even close. Not even close to the value that have to be killed in order to, to salvage all this stuff. And yeah, with the factory down, that's it. And here it throws in the towel. That is game. So, well done, Google Frog. Going back to fight Dying Friend for the last time this tournament. Just been Google Frog v. Dying Friend. Though, I gotta think props to Anir and Hokomoka for making it to the elimination and Anir for getting it to third place. So, well done, Anir. And now we move on. As we're going to be having Google Frog and Dying Friend fight it out for the grand final spot. And it is going to be... It is going to be a thing. And we're going to be starting with Tandem Graders. But I'm going to have a short break before that happens. So stay tuned. We'll be back in just a couple seconds.